The AFL round four saw the return of my curse on Frio. If I tip them, they normally lose. So I probably won't tip them for round five. Let's start the week off by checking out how I did in round four. And it started very, very well. It was on Thursday, the Adelaide Crows versus the Melbourne Demons. And I did a 20 point win for the D's. They won by 15. I said when I tipped them that I didn't think that being at home would really help the Adelaide Crows in the fact that they're just not playing well enough to take advantage of that. And that was pretty accurate in this game. So I get a point for the result and half a point for a close score. An excellent start. We then went to Friday with Brisbane versus North. Now I expected North... Um, considering their previous games, to actually score a decent amount of goals. they, Although they've been losing, they've been scoring at the same time. However, it didn't turn out this way. Brisbane have now all of a sudden got a firecracker up their backside and are performing quite well indeed. And so, although I got the correct result, nowhere near the correct score. Not many people got a close score in this one. I think lots of people are probably on a similar-ish line with me. Then, Port versus Essendon. And I just want you to look at those two scores. 112 to 42, 111 to 42. It's almost like, you okay, you can copy my homework, but don't make it too obvious because they are some very similar score lines. And once again, once again, I think clearly most people believed that port would win they would certainly take the advantage of being at home but not by as much no one got a close score here port i did by 20 they actually won by 69 69 Woohoo! cheeky uh so that didn't work out as well but once again luckily no one got a close score on that one so that's that's okay uh, one point for the correct result Saturday came along and I was fast asleep in bed because it was an early kickoff for me. Um, 1%. Who is that one? Two people. Who are those two people that tip West Coast to win? I don't know. Now, there is a real spread. I think this is the first time looking at it. There is a real spread on what people predicted Sydney to win by. Uh, there was some that did high, some that did low. I did by 60, we actually only won by 26, which is it's, it's quite disappointing actually, considering what other teams have beaten West Coast by. Um, we let them score too many, but I get a correct result at least. So it's another point in the bag. So I'm undefeated at the moment until the curse strikes again. Bloody Frio, they were literally in the lead the whole game and then they capitulate, capitulated, imploded. Um, yes, okay, he may have touched the ball, I get it, but life moves on. Um, I did Fremantle to win by 6, Carlton won by 10, which is really annoying. So I was I was fairly close, at least to a close score. This was the decider for a lot of people, and I'll explain later. But I get absolutely nothing. I get absolutely nothing, and I'm gutted because, as you'll see in a minute, this was my only loss this week. Bulldogs versus Geelong. I did a 10 point win for Geelong. They won by four. They just held on. Just held on. We watched this one. Oh my God. Cats almost blew it. But that is a point for the result and half a point for a close score. Excellent. Then Sunday, we had a great day on Sunday as well. Uh, Gold Coast Suns 89, GWS 117. I did them to win by 20 and GWS won by 28. So another result and close score followed by Richmond versus Saints. Uh, that was another good result because uh, I did St. Kilda to win by 10. They won by seven. I think they were so close to, uh, they were so close to winning by 10. I'm so annoyed. They were so close to winning by 10 and they didn't in the end. Um, but not bad, not bad at all. And the last game was Collingwood versus Hawthorne. I think, as you can see, most people predicted Collingwood to win. And I did a very big win. I did a 50-point win for Collingwood. They only won by five. Uh, unbelievable. I, I thought they would see off Hawthorne easily. And very similar to the, the previous two games, 
it was a tight old finish. It was a really, really tight finish. But I end the week with 8 out of 9. <sighs> it's not quite good enough because I should have had 9 out of 9. So let's see the movers and shakers because after round 4, Yin has moved up to top spot. Uh, it moves up 2. Uh, Garud is up 5. Now, the main thing I would say is a lot of people got 9 out of 9 this week. A lot of people got 9 out of 9. So we're seeing some real big movements indeed. Uh, any other big movements? 17 and 17 and 18 for Sam Bird. Mimi G and Metal King. Hazy Marie down. Uh, Stinky Pinky up 26. 32 for Enyul. Paul up 26. Felix up 31. Uh, Jason D up 40. Oh, Rach is down 17. Samster, she got all correct. Uh, Sam is up 40. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. The golden hat this week goes to just really. Wow, up 56. Cow down 19. He's dropping like a brick. Uh, Aussie Austrian up 42. K Power uh, up 34. Down 24 is Goxter Jackson. Last year's winner is down 2. Uh, 39 Vam H, 34 up. The Genius down 19 is Banger Harvey. Uh, where Tasha is down 22, Dark Soul down 36, me down 6. This is what's annoying, and uh, this shows how well some people did because I got 8 out of 9 and a fair few close scores. And so normally that would be a really good week, and I would go zoom up the table, but I think too many people got a full house this week. Let's see who gets the wooden spoon. Ashley Smith up 37, down 17. Connor Pepper uh, up 38, 38. New, New Elijah uh, and Bisk down 56. Aussie TV, ouch. Uh, let's keep going, let's keep going. Uh, we've got some more movers there, up and down. Where's Cardi? I want to see where Cardi is. Right, loser. <laughs> Um, hang on. Wooden Spoon goes to Gopies, Gopies, Gopies 2024, uh, but only down six. So, yeah, I suppose everyone else around you is poor. Where is, where is Cardman? Up nine places this week. Uh, it's 124. Round five. Here we go then. We start on Thursday at the MCG with Melbourne versus Brisbane. Now, Brisbane have finally got their first win of the season. Dees, they started off obviously a little bit slow, but they picked it up, didn't they? They are now four wins at the last five, and I just can't see these losing. I, there was the whole talk about them not being quite as good, but clearly, like I said at the start of the season, they are good enough, and they do enough. Um, even if there may have been a few troubles in... in uh, in their squads, but I have got to go with Melbourne Demons, I think, and I think they should win okay, to be fair, that, you know, Lions, they're not at home, they are down at the MCG, and I think Dees should take advantage, I am going to do Dees by 14, that's the thing, Brisbane should have the quality, and hopefully, um, for the quality of the game, Brisbane after that win, hopefully that is what is going to start their season going because down in 13th, they really need some wins now if they're going to try and get in the top eight, but still all to play for. I wouldn't, wouldn't be too stressed. Uh, then on Friday, we go to the Marvel Stadium, the Docklands, Western Bulldogs versus Essendon. Western Bulldogs, they almost won. Essendon got absolutely trounced, right? They got absolute chance. So I've got to go with a Western Bulldogs win. I know they are only two out of four, but actually their performances haven't haven't been that bad. They've been probably quite average, but average is enough. Um, and Essendon just seem now to be slipping up a little bit. So let's go Western Bulldogs by 20. Yeah, let's do Bulldogs by 20. I think that's a fairly... That's a fair scoreline to give. Saturday comes around and it is GWS who are on amazing form. Top of the league at the moment at Manuka Oval. If you're going to say it some other way, fair enough. Uh, GWS versus Saints. Saints obviously came from a win, but it was, a, that it was a very poor performance by Saints and they managed to pull it back in the second half. But 
I can't see any other winner than GWS. GWS are on fantastic form. I hate, hate to say it as a Swans fan, but they are on very, very good form and they should win comfortably. So I'm going to do a Giants win by 40 on that one, I think. We then go back to Marvel Stadium and it's Carlton versus Crows. I still cannot see any sign of life from the Crows. So I think it'll be five out of five losses for the Crows again this week. Uh, Carlton could say they got a little bit fortunate last week in round four. They managed to, to squeeze past Frio. Um, maybe you can say a dodgy umpiring decision, but that's life, that's sport. Uh, SHIT happens, but Carlton should, on paper, win this game against the Crows, who are, as I said, they just haven't got anything. I'm not seeing any spark from them. So, let's go a Carlton win by 20. It may be more than that, but I think 20 is fair and reserved, because you never know, Carlton, um, Adelaide Crows may show something, but I still don't think it'd be enough. Then... TBC in Sydney, uh, there'll be an overlay if I find out what game there is. Gold Coast Suns versus Hawthorne. Why is it in Sydney when it's Gold Coast Suns versus Hawthorne? Okay, don't know. Anyway, Gold Coast Suns versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, they did put up a little bit of a fight against Collingwood, but I think that possibly says more about Collingwood's performances recently than actually Hawthorne's ability. Um... Yes, yes, players, players like Dustin and all that did provide something, but it's this one's a difficult one to call. Gold Coast have gone and lost their last two games, and, and they did not perform in the last one. And I, I just do Hawthorne get their first win? I'll give it a go. Let's give it a shout. Let's go Hawthorne with their first win. Let's say by six. Sh let's make it a tight one. Let's see if Hawthorne can can do well for me this week. Adelaide Oval, Port versus Frio. I am not picking Frio, but watch this. I won't pick Frio, and they'll win. Both on pretty good form. How Frio messed up last week, I don't know. But let's go with Port with that home advantage. We're going to go Port by 18. There you go. 6, 12, 18. Three goal lead. For Port Adelaide and then Sunday comes around and we have the Geelong Cats versus North Melbourne and I, I'm so disappointed with North's last week's game with such a poor poor effort it's at the GMHBA stadium that is a mouthful always to say it is in the litter tray uh, and Geelong are at home so there is no I just, there is no chance of North winning this. I just cannot see any chance of North winning. So, Cats by 40. Might be more, might be less, uh, but Cats by 40 on Sunday. Then, Opta Stadium, West Coast versus Richmond. Now, it's a little bit tougher. Um, Richmond have shown a little bit of fight in their last few games. West Coast obviously scored more than... I thought they would score against my boys, the Sydney Swans. But Richmond should, should have the players. Um, when I said when I said Dustin, I meant him for Richmond. So ignore that. People probably have already commented, Dustin doesn't play for... Sorry, I was thinking Richmond. Um, Richmond should win this. Uh, so let's go Richmond by... What are we doing? Richmond by 30. Yeah, they are going to get their second win of the season. So, my predictions for this week. Melbourne by 14. Bulldogs by 20. Giants are going to have a big win by 40. Carlton by 20. Hawthorne by 6. Port by 18. Geelong by 40. And Richmond by 30. Once again, uh, this is really, really hotting up. And we are only five weeks in. It's a fantastic fantastic competition so far this year with so much movement and i'm thoroughly enjoying it and i hope you guys everyone that is in this league um super brew competition i hope you're enjoying it too make sure you stick around for any watch alongs and make sure you stick around for next week's predictions and i will catch you next time no i don't take shit i got no love for
the fake this If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show my love